Hey everyone, welcome back to Topmosphere. So last week, we had a pretty steep correction for Bitcoin. It fell from 65k all the way down to 30k, which is about a 55% correction. One of the steepest that we have had in crypto so far. And some people are really calling for a bear market. So today, we'll be discussing how do you spot a bear market, not just in crypto, but in the stock market as well. So if you're interested, let's find out how. Before we start, my heart goes out to all those who were heavily impacted by the crash last week. Uh, remember, if you felt too much pain, you might need to relook at your risk management, which is a video that we'll cover in the future. But for now, Raw Paul says it best you buy, you hodl, you add on dips, and you don't use leverage. I believe that crypto and decentralized finance is the future, and we are only a 2 trillion market cap, potentially growing to as high as 100 trillion market cap over the next couple of years. And it's going to be insanely bumpy and volatile. We're going to get a lot of black swan events like last week. So as long as you can stay in your position um, and don't get liquidated, you can reap the rewards at the end. But I'm not saying not to take any risk. Being in crypto itself is already inherently risky. I'm just saying if you use too much risk like uh, taking on too much leverage or too much margin and you get liquidated for too much of your account and you're out of the game, then you might have to relook at your entire risk management. A uh, simple rule of thumb is if you lose every money, every dollar you have in your leverage or margin account and it hurts a lot, then you're probably risking too much. Okay, disclaimer, I think it is unlikely that we will be in a crypto bear market this year or at least a prolonged one due to macro factors like the Fed printing a lot of money and interest rates remaining low. And but nothing I say is financial advice. This is just my own opinion. So are we in a bear market? There are a few signs that I look out for whether we are in a bear market or not. And the first one is market structure being broken. So what does that mean? It means that the base upward trend line has been broken. So if we look back at the most um, drastic crash we had, not the most drastic crash, one of the worst crash we have had, which was last year, um, Black Tuesday, around March, we actually had Bitcoin crashing all the way down to $3,000 plus. And if we use that as the bottom, and we just draw a line up to the next bottom area, where Bitcoin was below 10 k for the last time, and we extend that all the way to where we are at, you'll see that the market structure actually has not been broken. Bitcoin actually bounced off that market structure, and we are now hovering around the 30 to 40 k region. So in that regard, we have not yet broken the market structure. So the bull run is not technically over. The second point that I look at is, are we below the bull market support band, which is the 20 weekly EMA and SMA, and some people use the 34 weekly SMA. So if we look at the charts, the red line is actually the 20 weekly SMA, and Bitcoin at 40K is currently sitting below it. I believe the red line is currently at about 45k. So as long as Bitcoin is below that, then we are not technically in a full-blown bull market as well. If we were to come up to the 45k range and get rejected, and this happens a few times, then we might say that we are constantly getting rejected by the 20 weekly moving average, which puts us in a more bearish scenario. If Bitcoin goes up to the 45k or the 20 weekly moving average, and gets rejected down, the odds are expected to bleed more severely against Bitcoin as well. The third point that I look at is, are we below the 200 day moving average? And that's the white line that we see on this chart. So this is the daily chart. And the white line now is around $40,000, 40k plus. Right now, we are actually sitting below it. We are trying to break it, but we have failed a couple of times to break above the 200 day moving average. Uh, even if we do break above, we need at least one additional day of confirmation to prevent a fake out. So as of now, we still have not yet broke above the 200 day moving average uh, with confirmation. So that means that we are not exactly in a bullish state as well. And the last point that I look at is the death cross, which is when the 50 day moving average crosses below the 100 or 200 day moving average. If it crosses below the 100 day, which is what happened right now, it's a relatively weak death cross. It doesn't always play out. Uh, and both death cross should be pointing downwards. Uh, but if it crosses below the 200 day simple moving average, which is around 40k right now, then that's a very strong death cross. Or some might call it a true death cross if both of them are pointing downwards. And that usually 
signifies uh, the start of a bear market. Alright, so what happens if we are in a bear market? So historically, the weak or overvalued alt will bleed badly against Bitcoin. So if you are in a position like um, Polkadot against Bitcoin for example, then you'll notice that Polkadot has fallen around 40% against Bitcoin already. So if all of your assets are in Polkadot, then you would have been much better off just putting it into Bitcoin. So the second point is that Bitcoin dominance would start to rise. So if we look at the charts, uh, we can actually see Bitcoin dominance bouncing off this support line. And this support line is actually from way back in the 2017, uh, 2018 era where Bitcoin dominance started to rise, went back down, and then it bounced off this area. So I'm just referencing this area as another support line. And we can see that Bitcoin has since bounced off that area. And that's typically what happens when Bitcoin crashes below the 20 weekly moving average and below the 200 day moving average. Most altcoins will bleed against Bitcoin as Bitcoin dominance goes back up. But we do have an altcoin rally right now. So you can see altcoins actually performing better than Bitcoin during this period. And this is because Bitcoin is hovering very close to the 200 day moving average. So there is a lot of speculation that once Bitcoin goes above the 200 day moving average again, the odds will start to rally as well. Because if it's above the 200 day moving average, it's in somewhat of a bullish territory. And that's what we are seeing right now. So if you are still in odds, you are basically betting on the fact that Bitcoin will break the 200 day moving average and therefore your alt gains will be much better than your Bitcoin gains. But if we do get rejected by the 200 day moving average again, then it is likely that a lot of alts will very quickly, possibly very quickly go back into Bitcoin and your alts will bleed quite badly. So it's a, it's a speculative bet if you are still in Bitcoin. I think for me personally, the safest place to be is in Bitcoin. Uh, but if you are on a risk on portfolio, then you do not want to be in Bitcoin if you are already hedged against the downside. You just want to be fully in altcoin to really bet that Bitcoin goes up and your altcoin goes up more. I just think that uh, as long as you know what your risks are, then act accordingly. So the third and last point is that blue chip alts or productive assets or even hype coins or uh, new launches might continue to do well and gain ground against Bitcoin even in a Bitcoin bear market. So one example we look at is uh, Matic for example. It's actually doing rel relatively well against Bitcoin. It's only down about 6-7% against Bitcoin from the top. We're not counting the weight cause it might be a blow off top. Uh, but from the close all the way to where it is now, it's only down against Bitcoin by about 7-8%, 7, 7, which is quite a strong performance. And another one we could look at is Celsius. So Celsius is, has been a very strong coin since the beginning. It's also possibly a cash flow asset, which means that it generates, the, it generates as, um, cash flow, generates revenue. And Celsius is basically a lending, centralized lending platform. You would collateralize your assets like Bitcoin into Celsius and they would allow you to loan certain assets uh, like, like USDC and you pay a very small uh, loaning fee interest rate. I think as low as 1%. And from there, the amount that they generate is indirectly going into the value of Celsius. So Celsius has actually not really been affected throughout the drop as, uh, um, as well. So that those are very strong coins that can continue to gain ground against BTC even in a potential bearish market. Uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to share. So subscribe and like if you found it useful and thanks for watching. See you guys again next time.